My beloved brothers, my sisters, be conscious of the day in which you are going to return to Allah. Be conscious of the day in which you are going to return to Allah. Prepare for that day. We have many issues across the globe that we need to speak about and remind one another about with the idea of preparing for the day we are going to meet with Allah. When you achieve on this earth, thank Allah. And don't let that achievement make you turn away from your Lord. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem O man, what is it that has deceived you against your own Lord? Al-lazhi khalaqaka fa sawwaka fa adalak Fi ayy suratin ma sha'a rakkabak The one who has created you, he has fashioned you, he has given you your identity. The one who has really given you your shape and your form. How can you turn away from your Lord? Similarly, when it comes to loss, my brothers and sisters, the opposite of the achievement. Like I said, do not let your achievements distance you from Allah. The more you get, the closer you should become to Allah. That means you have the blessings of Allah. It's easy to earn. It's easy to get power. It's easy to have authority. It's easy to be placed above others in terms of position and so on. But it's not easy for everyone to allow that particular gift of Allah to make you actually come closer to Allah. When your gift has allowed you to come closer to Allah, you have indeed achieved. In a similar fashion, when you suffer a loss, people are divided into two categories. At times, the loss would actually make people closer to Allah. That is a gift of Allah. Any loss that brings you closer to Allah is not a loss. It is a gain. Even if that loss lasts your entire lifetime, in the hereafter when you meet with Allah, you will have achieved the everlasting bliss of Jannatul Firdaus. My beloved brothers, my sisters, there are some from amongst us whom when they suffer a loss, they turn to haram, they turn to intoxicants, they turn to that which is in disobedience of Allah. Don't let that happen. Whether it is suffering a loss in your family, in your social circles, in your authority, or in your wealth, in your health. When you suffer a loss as a believer, come closer to Allah. One might ask, how long should I bear patience? My brothers and sisters, bear patience for as long as it takes. No problem. Are you not a believer? إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah says, Allah recompenses those who bear patience unlimitedly, without an account, without a limit. Imagine someone says, I'm going to give you unlimited. What do you want? What do you want? No matter what you say, you can continue to ask. That is the reward of the one who bears patience. It is said that the one who is sick and ill, when he or she bears patience for the sake of Allah, when they see the reward of the sabr, that Allah chose them to go through on the day of judgment, they will have hoped that they remained sick and ill for longer, so that they could have a bigger reward. Imagine when you are bearing patience, doing nothing but bearing patience. It is so tough that Allah Almighty gives you a reward only on that condition. You are earning a reward only because you are bearing patience. So tune yourselves to come closer to Allah as the days pass. May Allah Almighty grant us from His goodness. My brothers and sisters, unfortunately some people turn to other people when they have a problem in a way that is not befitting a believer. They would go to someone at times purporting to be religious, 
And what would they do? They would say, Malam, I have a problem. I need you to do something for me so that I have this money or this position or this woman or this man or my relation with that person is like this or like that. Believing that this person has some superstitious power that will bring about the desired effect and impact. Whereas that power belongs to Allah. And in the case of Allah, it is not superstition. It is just His power. Never turn to other people to solve your problems by visiting those who claim to know the unseen or who can help you with the unseen because ultimately it will result in your destruction and theirs and it will cause tremendous pain to you and your family and those you are trying to affect and impact man ata arrafan aw kahinan fasaddaqahu bima akhbar faqad kafara bima unzila ala muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wasallam Whoever visits a fortune teller or a soothsayer, one of these people who claim to know the unseen, to help you regarding the unseen, if you just visit them, the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad says, if you believe what they have to say, you have disbelieved in what I have brought. Is it worth it? Is it worth losing your iman by visiting people just because you are fed up of something happening in your life? Bear sabr. Turn to the Quran, Ayatul Kursi, the three surahs at the end of the Quran, Al Ikhlas and Al Mu'awidatan. Kul a'udhu bi Rabbin Falak, Kul a'udhu bi Rabbin Nas. Do you not have conviction in the word of Allah? How much time of the day do you spend reading the Quran? And then you want to visit a witch doctor, you want to visit a soothsayer, you want to visit a magician, you want to visit a person who might cast a spell. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, by visiting, by believing, the Prophet Muhammad says, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Such a person, by merely believing that someone besides Allah can bring me good fortune, has disbelieved in the message brought by Muhammad Engage in Tawbah. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. If you have done this and it is rampant in societies across the globe, among people who call themselves Muslims, where is it? My beloved brothers, my sisters, we should never do that. It is something that we have to speak about because we are losing our faith in Allah. My brothers, my sisters, it is Allah alone who controls your destiny. Those people do not control their own destiny. There was a brother who was at one of the airports and he was with his wife. A certain man came to him and told him, I will tell you your future for $75. And he said, I'm not interested. I'm a believer. He continued to walk with him. He says, I'll tell you your future for $70. He says, I am not interested. I'm a believer. He says, I, he continued to work with him until he got to $5. Until he got to $5. Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty grant us strength. My brothers, my sisters. At that juncture, the man sat next to these people and told him, you will die at the age of 70. You will die at the age of 70. Later on, he says, I am waiting for my $5. I am waiting for my $5. This brother who is a believer in Allah told him, My beloved brother, I want to tell you, if you don't even know that I'm not going to give you the five dollars, how would you know the future of the 70 years? Subhanallah. How would you know? I'm not even going to give you five dollars. And if you knew the future so well, why would you be sitting begging from people for 50 and 70 dollars? Subhanallah, the moral is my beloved brothers, my sisters, turn to Allah. Build a good relation with Him. Read your Quran every day. Ayatul Kursi is powerful. It will protect you from anyone trying to cast a spell against you. It will protect you from anyone trying to harm you. Listen to the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. Wala fi samai wa huwa sami'u alim In the name of Allah. By whose name nothing will harm on earth. 
No, in the skies. And He is the all-hearing, all-knowing. Repeat that dua on a daily basis. Nothing will harm you. You require one condition, your faith and conviction. I am convinced what will harm me? Nothing. Zero. I belong to Allah. Do what you want. May Allah protect all of us. It is the firm conviction that creates a solid dome around you. You have the Lord of the worlds looking after you. He will protect you. You do not need to resort to haram in order to achieve or to be protected. Similarly, if you look at the reason of revelation of the last two surahs of the Quran, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ It is connected to protection against magic. Read those verses, you will find anyone who ties knots and blows in them is considered a magician. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, مَنْ سَحَرَ فَقَدْ أَشْرَكَ Allahu Akbar Whoever casts a spell has engaged in association of partners with Allah. You remove yourself from the fold for what? Don't do that and don't go to someone to do that.